All right, welcome back everybody to another episode of uh, Your Real Estate of Mind with your host, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. Where we help everyday people achieve wealth through real estate. Close. We achieve, uh, yeah, that, that, that works. We help everyday, <laughs> we always struggle with that one. So help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. You think so, they know our own tagline. Yeah, I know. It's all good. So, hey everybody, we're glad to have everybody here today. We have a really special guest and I have a really cool story that he doesn't know that I'm about to uh, tell him. But first, I want to uh, to introduce this guy. Um and I, on a well, let, let me introduce him first, and then I'll uh, then we'll talk. And I, I have a, a personal story about him from 13 years ago that, or 13 ish years ago that he doesn't know, and he's <laughs> saying to himself, "What are what we talking world? about?" So what was I doing 13 years ago? I've been very very excited about this because I think that what I what I learned from this gentleman actually changed the direction of our business as we were brand new. And again, he doesn't even know that he taught me. So I think this will be cool. So. Listen, so first I want to introduce Jay Connor to you. So Jay Connor has been uh, buying and selling houses since 2003. Now in his city, his population is what, 40,000 people, 40,000 people, and he profits on average $67,000 a deal. So that's pretty amazing, actually. People say they can't do it. My yeah. town's too small, right. but he doesn't want to hear it, right? <laughs> that's something he wants to hear people yeah, say. Yeah, those are excuses. Rehabbed over 300 houses, been involved in over $52 million in transactions over seven years. He's completely automated his seven-figure income business to where he works in his business less than 10 hours a week. He's consulted one-on-one -on -one with over 2,000 real estate investors. I'm going to put myself there, 2001. He doesn't know it yet, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, he's raised over 2.1 million in less than 90 days. Hear this one, guys. He's raised, I'm going to say it again, raised over $2.1 million in less than 90 days in private money when the banks were cut off. If you know our story, you know that we had to do something very similar. Uh, he's a commercial developer. He's a national speaker um, on the topics of private money, automation, and foreclosures. He is a best-selling author of Where to Get Money Now, right? So um, stay at the end of the podcast for sure. You're going to be able to hear that. And throughout the podcast, I want to make sure that you know where to get that book for free. <clears throat> he's a leading expert on private lending, marketing, and business development, past president of Business Network International, Business Networking International, and he and his wife, Carol Joy, were signed in Morehead City, North Carolina. But I, but I just learned that she is also a native Texan, so. Yeah, so that's yeah. a good thing. So, so welcome to our call today, Jay Connor. Glad to have you, buddy. Hello, Glenn, and hello, Amber. Thank you so much for having me join the party. We are <laughs> glad you're here. So Thank I got to I got to start by telling you this story because I, I got to open up with this. So you are, you know, you are somebody who in the industry is kind of a master and well known as a private money raiser. Like you teach people how to raise private money. It's a big thing that you do. That's it. What you don't know about our story is that, you know, Amber and I started about 13 years ago. We're, we're now, whatever, seven, 800 flips later, 700 we, plus We started flips. at the very end of 07. So right before. Right. And markets, crash. markets crashed and we had to figure out how to raise money. We only had two deals under our belts with a bank. We had no money. We were broke. That same similar kind of American success, success story. But we started out with like no doc loans that we got from the bank with good credit. And then those just like went away. Ooh, just no, I remember those days. And Jay, I was, we lived in a two bedroom condo that we were barely getting by on. And I had to figure out how to do this. And I don't know how, but I'm almost certain that I had a CD from you. Did you have a CD back then? that maybe you were interviewed by somebody. Is that possible 12, 13 years ago? Maybe 11, 12 years ago? Yes, uh, very possible, very possible. So I don't know where it came from. I don't know how it wound up in my, well, disc player back then. Sorry to say I'm old, right? But disc player, but I also had a used to have a cassette player and all that stuff, but- um, You're dating yourself. Yeah, I know. But I remember, I remember the spot in, this is so weird, because I remember the spot in my parking lot in the condo development, when I was walking, and I, I'm I'm 99.9% .9 the more I'm talking to you and hearing your voice, that it was you. And I heard you talking about this and how to do it and what to do. And I don't, it was like an hour long interview somebody had with you. And I remember going to Amber, I got it. I know what we're going to do. And we figured it out the hard way, right? I don't even know if you had something at the time you probably were teaching, but I don't, I don't know if that particular interview led me to you. We're going to make sure people get led to you now. But I was like, wow, we figured it out on our own. We raised about $5 million from your methods that we put into play. And I've never met you before. So wow. You changed, what, you a, what an amazing our story. You well, changed you know, our life and you don't even know it. So I want to say wow. thank you before we start today. That is awesome to hear. Well, you know, and that's why I'm so passionate about uh, teaching, educating, training real estate investors, because of course, you know, 
you all have done more flips than I have. Carol, Joy, and I, uh, of course, we're in a small area. Our total population, you said, is 40,000. So we've only flipped uh, a little over 400 houses here in our local area. We've done a lot more deals than that, subject twos and et cetera, pretty houses. But as far as rehabbing and flipping, but, you know, we, we impact lives as real estate entrepreneurs and we sell a lot of homes even still today on rent to own in fact sold one yesterday on rent to own that mother with her children would have no other way to uh, own a home uh, get you know actually get the title transferred into their name without that program but even though we impact a lot of lives by helping distressed sellers get back on their feet you know etc selling homes to people that ordinarily couldn't buy one um, in addition to that, though, in this world of educating and coaching other real estate investors, Carol Joy and I are able to impact so many more people, thousands and thousands of people across the nation, and really make such a huge difference in their lives. And I mean, you know, that's why we get up in the morning. It, I mean, that's our purpose is to make an impact, make a difference. And so hearing your old story really resonates with me as to I mean, that's that's the fulfillment of, of what it is that we are all about when it comes to, you know, training and coaching. You know, it's sort of like putting a message in a bottle, like that interview that you heard. It's sort of like putting a message in a bottle and putting it out to sea. You just never know where it's going to end up. Yeah, you don't know. I mean, now, you know, now with our coaching business, through, what, through the people that we impact, we've helped thousands of people learn our methods and really our our method that we built was really now that i now that i'm getting to know you and stuff it was really based on a lot of principles sound principles that you had in that cd just interesting that it's just interesting how that all comes together and before we jump into more business stuff i have to tell you i also occasionally will watch you on facebook my mom's a piano teacher my grandmother used to play for the silent movies so pianos really? big, yes my grandmother passed away but she was 20 or 30 years whatever it was been a while now 20 years ago but um but yeah so uh when i watch you guys you guys are very talented i see you played i smile you have a huge following on facebook i'm like how's that guy get so many likes and comments look at that I, that i watch i'm like Look at him. He's playing. You guys, you guys got some, uh, got skills. some, got some skills. So yeah, it's, if you guys want to ever, all of our listeners out there, if you ever want to, um, to follow Jay, how do they follow you on Facebook? Tell them that out of the gates. Cause that'd be fun to sure. do. Sure. Yeah. Carol Joy and I, in fact, the two of you remind me of, of me and Carol Joy. We, um, on Monday evenings, not every Monday evening, but a lot of Monday evenings at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time, we'll go on my personal Facebook page. And my personal Facebook page is just Jay Connor, J A Y. Connors, C-O-N-N-E-R, in, um, you know, Newport, North Carolina, is a black and white picture of me, you know, leaning up on the piano there, and so, you know, um, this past Christmas, uh, we went on there Monday evening before Christmas, and uh, my lands, we had 1,800 people show up for that party, and we played Name That Tune and everything, so yeah, if you yeah. got any, you got any followers out there that like um, a party and piano and singing, me and Carol Joy just sit right there at the grand piano, and we always have a theme on Monday evenings when we do it. And we have people play Name That Tune. We have like 400 people commenting and sending in, oh, that song is this. And, and yeah. we have a great time. And uh, it's a little crazy, a little nutty. We sort of banter back and forth through the entire hour. It's fun. I mean, it's when the first time I saw you, I'm like, what's he doing there? Play? I thought he was the money guy. I'm like, yeah, he's a real person. Yeah, you know, so what a, what a, what a cool, fun thing to do, dear, especially during oh, this yeah. time of COVID when everybody's like stuck at home and stuff. That's a, like such a great way to spend your time and have fun and engage with other people. And our daughter's been taking piano for, I don't know, not eight, eight, nine years. She's and I watch, I see the notes she plays. I'm like, I do not even know what those say? Like, you know, cause I don't even yeah, know, like, you know, I know like good, three yeah. songs from my mom, but my daughter plays. So she's, uh, She's kind of the favorite granddaughter. My, my brothers always say, oh, sure, she's the favorite, plays piano. But anyways, back to business stuff. I, th I think you guys are great. I just want to tell you that. So yeah, Jay, if you want to follow you. him, guys, you got to follow Jay. They're, they're a lot of fun. Jay, you mentioned something, though, about, you know, being able to kind of impart your wisdom and putting that bottle out to sea and everything. And that that is also the one thing that Glenn and I love is that real estate is um, is for the everyday person. It's not like you have to have any sort of special background or schooling or you know, you don't have to be a certain age or a man or a woman or whatever. It's just, it's, it's like for everybody. And if you can like grab a hold of that and just get the knowledge you need, you can, the sky's the limit. What's your background, Jay? How did you get into it? 
Well, I was raised in the mobile home or manufactured housing business. In the South, we call them trailers. They call them trailers in Texas, too, yeah, Amber. They do. <laughs> and there's a bunch of mobile homes in Texas uh, out and about in the countryside, I'll tell you. And, of course, here in North Carolina as well. So uh, my father um, was in that business. I was raised in it. So I grew up uh, being exposed to helping other people purchase and own affordable housing, if you will. <clears throat> and in 2002, 2003, uh, the majority of that uh, financing for the consumer of uh, the, that product, single wides, double wides, whatever you want to call them, 95% of it went away. And so I knew for a long time, if I ever got out of the mobile home business, I wanted to become a flipper. And this was long before 2003 was long before HGTV came yeah, out yeah. And, and all that stuff. And um, so, and there's a long story that I won't take the time to tell right now, but anyway, we have some really good friends that uh, did their first, got their first house uh, through their uh, father, real estate investor, finding a fixer upper. They did the sweat equity on the nights and weekends and they pocketed over $30,000 in 90 days. This was back in 1993 here in Newburgh, North Carolina. And I was busting my butt trying to make $3,000 on a single wide trailer when I was selling that. I said, you know what? I like 30,000 better than 3,000. Yeah, it's the and same amount of time to work, right? Yeah, it's like, it's perspective, though. It's perspective to some people at that point in your life, you think $3,000 is all the money in the world until you realize that, you I mean, know, 30. Yeah. yeah. 30 is better. So anyway, um, it's a lot more fun starting up a company than it is shutting down a company. So uh, in that whole year back in 2002, 2003 of shutting down our mobile home company, which we had 65 uh, retail dealerships across three states. Wow. Uh, so we were shutting it down and that's when I started up and we did our first deal and uh, bought our first house in October, 2003 and uh, bought it for 50 and put 50 in it, had a hundred in it and, Sold it for 140, and I didn't know what I was doing really. Um, and uh, I said I like this. So our first year, we just did three houses, and so from 2003 until 2009, January 2009, we relied on local banks, traditional mortgage companies, no doc loans, all that crazy stuff, to fund our real estate deals. And I hadn't been to any seminars. I didn't even know what subject two was. I didn't know what creative financing was. I didn't know what owner financing. I didn't even know what wholesaling was. Never heard of hard money. Never heard of private money. I'm just doing my thing here in, you know, our little county. And in January 2009, I picked up the receiver on this phone right here. And I called up my banker. And his name was Steve. The operative word in that sentence is was. He was my banker. My banker. <laughs> and uh, so I called him up. I had two deals under contract, over $100,000 in profit between those two deals. And I'd had that conversation many times with Steve about, you know, here's where the house is located. Here's the after repair value. Here's the funding I need and the closing date, right? Mm -hmm. So... I learned in that conversation very, very quickly that I did not have a line of credit anymore. I'd been cut off with no notice. My first thought when he said that to me that, you know, you ain't got no money. <clears throat> you know, my first thought was, I wish I had known that before I put non-refundable earnest money down yes. on those two houses. Yes. And my next thought was, <clears throat> what am I going to do? So I hung up the phone from Steve and I sat here for a second and here's something for your folks to write down or to remember. And that is, it's impossible for you to fail until you decide to quit. And quitting was not an option for me. And so I, I called up Jeff, my good friend in Greensboro, North Carolina, fellow real estate investor. I told him what had happened. And he said, I said, what are we going to do? He says, and he told me about private money. I'd never heard of private money, didn't know what private money was, but I learned about it real, real fast. And uh, within two weeks, uh, I put my private lending program together, offering you know, a program to people with investment capital or retirement funds using their self-directed IRAs. 
<clears throat> and I was able I was able to raise well over two million dollars in a very very short period of time. So it was a blessing in disguise at the time to be cut off. All I had was a million dollar line of credit, and uh, at the local bank. And so and and you know as you just mentioned, I mean the time I mean the timing I mean you know everything was falling apart globally, uh, 2008 2007 you know. And uh, but it was a huge blessing in disguise. So my banker actually gave me a raise by cutting me off to where I just had to find a better and another way to uh, fund my deals. And so, you know, my definition of coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. And so it was because of that experience that I was forced, if I was going to stay in the game, to find a uh, another way to fund my deal. So as a result, Carol Joy and I today have got 44 private lenders, individuals, human beings. I'm not talking hard money or broker money. We've got 44 individuals that are uh, investing with us, loaning their money to us on our deals, um, either from their investment capital or their retirement funds. And um, since that experience and that phone call, we have not missed out. We have not missed out on a deal because we didn't have the funding. That our stories are so similar, Jay, because it was, you know, we didn't have the backstory for you. We kind of jumped into real estate. We were $80,000 in credit card debt and we jumped in and we did the first couple of deals and we had two houses under contract when they, when I called my buddy and said, Hey, he was a mortgage broker. So I said, Hey, I need one more of those loans. He's like, yeah, it's gone. I'm like, nah, but you, you got one for me. We're, we're buddies. We, we play racquetball together. We're, but come on, we play golf. He's like, dude, I got nothing. I got nothing for you, man. And so that's, I, I relate a hundred percent to, uh, to that. And again, that's right on the same exact time that we started to build ours the same exact way that you did just, you know, helping people out. What good. I, I, I hear, <clears throat> I hear a lot of people, you know, the thing that holds them back is, you know, lack of knowledge and lack of money. Those are like the two biggest things I think that hold people back from getting started in real estate. And you were mentioning, you know, even like in the early nineties being in real estate and I'm in my head, I'm going like, when did the internet like start getting popular? It had to be the late nineties. Well, I actually for our mobile home company, uh, which was called leader homes at the time, we actually got the first website I ever got was four liter homes. And that was in 1994, 1995. And then I started uh, releasing piano music. In fact, we talk about piano at the beginning of the show. Yeah. Uh, one of my songs made it in, uh, I write and record original music. And one of my songs made it into a Universal Studios movie called Burn Hollywood Burn with Ryan O'Neill and Jackie Chan and Whoopi Goldberg and that crowd. And so I got my website put together. At that time, it was jayconnor.com. Of course, jayconnor.com today is all about real estate investing. So yeah. I moved it over to jayconnormusic.com. But that, I got that website for my music in 1997. Okay. So, so my, my thought with that is, you know, you were getting started in real estate, even in the nineties and, and learning all of this information before it was even that read, um, easily accessible. And so the people that have all these excuses today about, you know, it's, the, I I'm, I'm scared to get started and I don't have the money to get started. There are so many resources out there that are, are at our fingertips. Yeah. You know, we, we kind of did it the hard way <laughs> before, before that was so accessible. So I know you do some boot camp stuff like that. I want you to give some promotion for yourself here because I we we just we love you. You know, we were just meeting you today face to face. We were in, we're in some groups together, but you don't know. But I you've been a part of my life for a long time. You just didn't know it, and I didn't know it until I met you at the group. Or I not met you, but I heard your voice. I'm like, Jake Connors at our group, huh? That name sounds familiar. I heard you talk on a. I heard you talk on something, and I'm like. Man, that's the same voice. I'm pretty sure it's the same voice that many it's, years ago. It's sort of hard to hide this uh, Southern North Carolina <laughs> accent. That's for I sure. Love it. it is. No, that's it if was. I, a very I couldn't even get rid of it in uh, Honduras. Uh, a few years ago, I went on this mission trip with some good friends at church. And uh, they try they try to teach me how to introduce myself. So there I am over in Honduras going, Mayamo Jay Connor, come on, say <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, that's good stuff. Well, as long as you're using the right words, you should be okay. We were yeah. in Costa Rica one time and Glenn went for a jog around the complex and there's a, a worker walking by and he goes, Gracias. Well, like yeah. even, even to say hola, hello, and he said gracias <laughs> instead. He's like yeah. Okay. Yeah. He may have known I was a tourist. Yeah, I don't know. A little bit. So you got, you're helping a lot of people work and your boot camps and stuff, which I think you, do you still run boot camps now or now with COVID? Are you, are you not doing those now? Or are you doing? Virtual? Oh yeah. We're, we're back. We're back in person. Of course we got social distancing, taking people's temperature and all that kind of stuff. 
Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, we uh, we went back in person. Uh, of course, I still do virtual as well. Sure. But we went back in person a few months ago and um, got another one coming up in a few weeks. And so, yeah, we're and I hold mine here in eastern North Carolina. So what do those boot camps include? What are, what are they about? Tell her, tell her. So, so my, my primary boot camp that I uh, present is called Jay Connors Real Estate Cash Flow Conference. And the reason it's called a cash flow conference is not only do I spend a lot of time teaching uh, private money, I actually have private lenders uh, come to my events for my attendees to network with. But at the boot camp, I teach all four pillars uh, of mine and Carol Joy's business. And those four pillars consist of, first of all, how do you find deals and locate motivated sellers before other real estate investors even know about the opportunities to serve? So that is my foreclosure system. So Carol Joy and I started creating and developing our foreclosure system to where we track all foreclosures in our target market. Um, we track them. I've got the marketing put together of uh, sequential direct mail letters, outbound calling, scripting of knocking on doors and et cetera. And so we are able, we don't rely on any online sources. So we're able to contact these people. And of course, in the times that we are here today with COVID, there's going to be another big opportunity to serve a lot of people uh, with the foreclosures opening back up. So that's the first of the four pillars that we teach at the boot camps, finding the deals. Uh, the second is funding. That's the private money. That's the second pillar. Uh, the third pillar is selling quickly. So I have what's called my 72-hour selling system. So even in a slow market, we're in a very hot market now across the nation, but you know, very, very low inventory. But even when we're in a slow market, I have a system of selling houses very, very quickly um, and maintaining price. Another one of the pillars is rehabbing. So we go on my rehabbing bus tour during the boot camp. And what's very different about that is we don't go to look at houses in the multiple listing service and estimate repairs. We actually go to our houses that either we haven't started rehabbing yet or they're in the process. And we go to those that are finished, that are completely staged. So they meet my team members. They meet my, how am I able to work in this business less than 10 hours a week? Truth be told, less than five hours a week. Well, it's because of the automation team. So my attendees meet my realtor. They meet my interior designer. They meet our acquisitionists. Uh, they meet our real estate attorney. The whole team that makes this happen is because of this team. For example, we just closed on a deal yesterday right here in our town to where I didn't know anything about this deal three weeks ago. And a bird dog of ours, an individual that, you know, rides around, takes pictures of FISBO signs, That's sent me a picture good. of this FISBO sign. I sent it to the acquisitionist. Acquisitionist sends it to the realtor. We negotiate the deal. And because of the team, we're buying this house for $250,000 with an after repaired value of $375,000. Oh. And the repairs are only $20,000. So that's just an example of how the team is so important. So I teach in my boot camps how to locate and put your team together. And then uh, the, the, the final pillar is automation. You know, I, you don't want to run around with your hair on fire, you know, trying to run this business. What kind of systems? to put in place to where you're running it and it's not running you. I want to keep talking to you, but tell people, I want to do it now and again at the end, but tell people how they can find you online, how they can get to know you as a spend some time. Tell, tell people how they can find you. Sure. So let me go ahead and do two ways. First of all, you mentioned during the intro, I've got a new book titled Where to Get the Money Now. Subtitle, How to Get All the Funding You Want for Your, de for your Deals. Um, and, and this is without relying on hard money. So folks, we're not talking about hard money, not talking about broker or institutional money. Very, very big difference between brokered money or hard money and private money. In this world of private money, we make the rules. We set the interest rate, we set the terms and et cetera. And so anyway, you can get my new book for free at the following website, www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R, dot com forward slash book b o o k that's j connor j a y c o n n e r dot com forward slash book b o o k in addition to that 
people can really connect with me. Um, I've got a, a academy, a member, a monthly membership academy that people interact with me live on Zoom twice a month. So I can also give all y'all's followers uh, a free two-week trial. Come check it out. Come hang out on the Zoom Academy call. <clears throat> and you can register for that at jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash trial, T-R-I-A-L. And uh, come hang out with me and the other Academy members twice a month. And um, <clears throat> we talk about finding deal. In fact, on yesterday's Academy call, we spent an entire hour sharing with each other how we're finding motivated sellers for free, for free. How do you find That's motivated fine. sellers for free? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> tell, tell me this if you would, Jay, what, what do you, you know, a lot of our people that listen to our podcast, I think a lot of our audience are people that are brand new or want to get started. They're dabbling or they're, or they're new students of ours or just checking out, you know, where, what do you think some advice you give people? You know, since you've been doing it for a while, what are some advice you think might be some good things to, uh, to give them as they kind of get started in their journey? The biggest piece of advice I could give is do not do your first deal without a mentor or coach that has been there and done it. Glenn and Amber are real estate investing coaches. Uh, they've got training. I mean, don't do this business the way I did it. I start I, or the way we did it. <laughs> yeah. I, I started out without any formal training. I didn't go to any seminars. I mean, I read a book or two, sure. but I didn't actually get the training that I needed. And as a result, I made some very, very expensive mistakes. I mean, I tell my students, I mean, you know, you're going to pay for your education one way or the other. Yep. Mm -hmm. And a lot more affordable way to pay for your education is go get trained by somebody that's already been through the minefield 100%. And, and can give you the training instead of making huge mistakes. It's going to cost a whole lot more money than any seminar. <laughs> do, do, yeah. you, do you find that that and this is what I find. I wonder if you find the same thing. I think people see people like you and I and a lot of people we're in masterminds with and they think to themselves, well, they didn't have a coach. You know, they, they mentioned that they did it the hard way. So they figured out, look how big they are. They don't have any idea of the turmoil and the stress and the loss. And the, I'm sure between all of us, it's millions of dollars we've lost in trying to train ourselves and step on our own feet and falling over. And, you know, uh, yeah, probably I, I, years off our life with stress and everything else, right? People don't, do you find that people don't see that side of us? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm sure. Some, I'm sure some of them do, but you know, I just cannot echo loud enough. There's a lot easier and quicker way, right? So we're not only talking about by getting the training that you need. We're not talking about saving money just in and of itself. I mean, how fast do you want to get there, right? I mean, you you can pay with your time, or you can invest a little bit of money, and you can shorten that learning curve tremendously to where you can come out the gate, you know, after spending some time with Glenn and Amber, you can come out the gate after three days or whatever and start doing deals instead of, you know, trying to navigate it on your own. Yeah. I always tell people you're either going to pay with time, money, or both. Exactly. And, you know, do you want to, do you want to be building the track as you're going along or do you just want to have a track to run on from the get go? Exactly. You, we're going to dramatically shorten your learning curve with education. Exactly. I would love. I would love to have you share, if you wouldn't mind, Jay. I know you can't take all your knowledge and put it down into ten minutes, but I'd love to know if you could give our listeners some, maybe just some tips on the private money stuff. Kind of like, you know, my, the one I heard many years ago was an hour long, but but you know, kind of like what you know, if if you the, could summarize the a few, yeah, version. the cliff note version of raising some private money, or maybe give a, a hot tip on what that, how they can raise private money for themselves. You know, maybe one one method that you do. Okay, so how long are you gonna give me? <laughs> <laughs> I know that's that's the trouble. I know, right? I know, I know. So take take five ten minutes. You'll know, just something like that and say, well, you know what? Right. So I'll 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 just I'll just um I'll just let a stream of consciousness of years and years yeah. of experience flow here for a few minutes. Sure. So first sure. of all, when it comes to raising money, uh, for your real estate deals, there's a few things that you want to have in place before you even start talking to anybody, right? The first thing you want to have in place is 
what's your program that you're offering, right? I mean, so I said a few minutes ago, I mean, the biggest difference between borrowing money from banks and institutions and hard money lenders is they make the rules when you're borrowing money from them, institutional money. They set the interest rate. They set the frequency of payments. Uh, they require personal guarantees. Uh, they require the appraisal, blah, 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 blah. When we're borrowing private money from individuals, we make the rules. So in my private lending program, there's 22 checkpoints, if you will, 22 checkpoints of the program. So you need to determine what's the interest rate that you're gonna pay. And here's the deal, set the program and treat everybody the same, right? Don't pay that person 6% and that one seven and that one eight, right? One reason I don't do that is because I got a lot of, now I got private lenders in 10 different states, but I got a lot of them right around here where we live sure. and people talk, yeah, right? Yeah. So if it's the same program offering that you're offering individuals, you don't have to remember who you're doing what for whom, it's all the same. So what's the interest rate? You know, are you going to offer people a, a way to get their money back early prior to the note coming due in case they have an emergency? Uh, what's the maximum that you're going to borrow, right? What's your maximum loan to value? My maximum loan to value typically is 75% of the after repaired value. I didn't say 75% of the purchase price. I said 75% of the after repaired value. So if I'm buying a house that's got an after repaired value of $200,000 and I'm buying it for 100,000 deeply discounted because it's a major rehab, then I can borrow up to $150,000 in my program. If I do that, I'm bringing home a $50,000 check from my real estate attorney's office. I'm getting a $50,000 check when I buy, let's say 30 or 35,000 of that is rehab. The other 15,000 I brought home can be for carrying costs, marketing expenses, insurance, taxes, paying the private lender monthly payments if they need monthly payments or whatever. So no, you know, what's your geographical area? You know, uh, how are you gonna protect insurance uh, and et cetera. So you need to know what it is that you're offering. All right, so you want to have that in place, right? Now, you also want to understand before you start that private money comes from three different categories. I call it three different piles of money. One category are your connections, you know, your own, what I call your warm market, people that you have some kind of connection with. They're in your cell phone, uh, they're on your email list. Uh, there you are. Your they are your Facebook friends, and I don't mean your fake Facebook friends. <laughs> right, I mean yeah. your real Facebook friends. That you yeah. know your LinkedIn connections and etc. So that's that's one category of where to get private money, and not only from these people, but who do they know? Right? Who do your connections know? The second category of getting private money is what I call from your expanded network of connections. Now, what I mean by that is, you know, sometimes uh, my students will say, well, Jay, there's no need for me to contact anybody in my cell phone. All my people are broke. None of my people's got any money. Ain't no need in doing that. Well, first of all, I don't believe them. But secondly, I get that, right? So I teach through my courses and in my and at my events, how to expand your network very quickly. I say, go to where the money is. The more money you roll in and waller in, the more money sticks to you. Right. So uh, how to how to grow that quickly from Rotary Clubs to Business Networking International to Chambers of Commerce to your local church to whatever your social network is. And yes, today so much is virtual. All that can be done virtually. And the third category of where to find private money is from existing private lenders, people that are already loaning out uh, money. Uh, collateralized by real estate. Well, how do you find those people? Well, don't do it the hard way, the way I started out uh, in 2009 when I started. So I hired my real estate attorneys paralegal to check local uh, deeds of trust or mortgages, most people call it a mortgage, looking for individuals loaning money out collateralized by real estate. I found one person in 90 days. I knew there had to be a better, quicker way. So 
we got some very sophisticated, smart, brilliant people, uh, software developers to develop my private lender data feed. And the private lender data feed, uh, we go out every month and get all the private lender loans uploaded into our data feed. Of, uh, we got their contact names, their, their contact information, how much money they're loaning out, the interest rate they're getting. So we have a way for my students and myself to contact these existing private lenders and do business with them. So again, what do you need to do in advance? Know what your program is that you're offering your warm market or your extended market, how to locate existing private lenders. Now, another big, 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 big thing to have in place, and that is your mindset. And so, well, here's what I mean by that. Until you own and control the real estate that exists between your ears, it's going to be very hard to own and buy and control real estate out there. Now, let me bring that practically to what I mean. Here's part of the mindset of attracting and raising a lot of private money quickly. First of all, I want everybody to know, to this date, I have yet to ask anybody for money. Nobody. So, but Jay, have you got $8 million in private money from 40 some people that you just rotate around from house to house to house to house? Here's how you get it. You become an educator, right? You become a teacher. You put your teacher hat on and you start teaching people what private money is. My land, you got it. Here's another big thing to do up front or you're going to miss out on over half the private money to attract in your world. And that is you got to establish, but well, you ain't got to do anything. But if you don't want to miss out <laughs> on over half of the private money, I highly recommend you establish a relationship with a self-directed IRA company and representative that you can refer new potential private lenders too that have retirement funds. I'm telling you, when you start educating people and I've got the PowerPoints all put together and everything, when you start educating people about, and I'm talking to sophisticated people like at the Rotary Club and stuff, you start educating people about self-directed IRAs, their eyes get that big because they ain't never heard of it. Yeah. Stockbrokers ain't never heard of it because there's no commissions in it for them. Right. So what do you do? Prepare yourself to educate people on what private money is, what self-directed IRAs are, um, and what your private lending program is. And then when you go through, and that can be a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody. It can be a Zoom party. Prior to COVID, it could be a private lender luncheon. Um, now Rotary Clubs are on you know, Zoom and everything. You can, they're all the time looking for speakers. You can take, you know, my PowerPoint presentation that takes 20 minutes and walks through educating people. Call to action of that presentation is the 16 minute audio that, you know, teaches people even more about it and et cetera. So when I get to the end of teaching people what private money is and et cetera, then I don't ask them for money. Here's the deal. If they've got investment capital or retirement funds, they're going to be chasing you. That's another big part of the mindset. We ain't chasing. We ain't begging. We're not selling. We're not trying to talk anybody into anything. And here's another big part of the mindset. One thing I discovered years ago is that if I don't tell other people that I know and teach other people about private money, private lending, and self credit IRAs, I'm doing them a huge disservice. Yeah. This is all about serving other people. It's yeah. all about, I mean, here's the deal. The only complaint I have received from my private lenders is them asking me, Jay, why didn't you tell me about this sooner? Right? Why? I mean, they think about the money they missed out, you know, be before that. So mindset, have your program ready to go. Um, you're not chasing, you're not begging. And I'll tell you what, the best time to raise private money is when you don't need it. And here's what I mean by that. Yeah. You see, if I go out and find a deal and I got lead sheets coming in and property lead sheets and all that stuff coming in and I find a deal and I've got it under contract, 
Well, you know, in the real world, most people require all the money. I don't care how good you are at negotiating subject to in terms and all that stuff, which I'm pretty good at. But I've discovered over the years, only about 17% of them FISBOs will sell to me creatively. What do the rest of them want? All the money. Well, if I got a deal in the contract and I'm needing funding, now I'm going out and trying to raise money for that deal that I've got under contract. I don't want that stress, right? Now, that also leads me to teach this, and I'll turn it back all over to you all after this tidbit. But here's another thing I learned the hard way years ago. Don't ever come to a private lender, particularly a new potential one, with your program, explaining your program and how that works, and a deal that you need funded. Have you not already compromised your, you already sound like you're begging, right? Whether you are or you aren't, you already sound like you're begging, here's my program, here's my deal, please fund my deal, please fund my deal, or I'm going to lose my deal, right? So, you present and teach your program. They give you a verbal pledge on how much money they got to work with and where it's located. Now you come back with the deal two days, three days, four days later or whatever, and now they're ready to do the deal. Oh, I take this, one more sub point. Don't do this. You got a private lender. They, they've told you how much they got to work with, how much money they got, you know. If it's a retirement fund, funds, a fund, you need to go ahead and get that transferred over Help them get that transferred over to a self-directed IRA company so they can loan out to you. Get that done ahead of time. But look, you got a deal ready to fund? Don't call up your private lender that's already told you how much money they got to work with and call them up and say, hey, I got this deal, blah, 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 blah. Do you want to do this deal? That's the most stupid question I ever heard in my life. You know, ask your private lender if they want to do a deal. Of course they want to do the deal. They've already told you how much money they got, and they're waiting for you to call them up. When I call them up, if it's the first one, I only tell them four things. First, I call them and say, hey, Amber, I got great news. I can now put your money to work for you. Got this house over in Newport, closing on it next Thursday after repaired value is 200,000. And I need you to have your $150,000 wired to my real estate attorney by next Wednesday. Make the assumption that they're going to go with it. Yeah. Asking somebody if they want to do something is like asking a five-year-old if they want ice cream. I mean, <laughs> the answer's if I if I ask somebody, if I ask somebody, do you want if you want to fund this deal? All I'm telling them is, well, maybe there's a reason I don't want to fund this right. deal. You're yeah. putting doubt in their mind, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, of course, of course they want to fund the deal, right? Because yeah. they've been waiting for me to call them with a deal, and I'm just calling them with good news. I know? love all of your information about. I mean, all of your information has been spectacular and yeah. and really good pieces of of information that's actually usable. Um, and I also, you know, we, our, our podcast is called the real estate of mind because we're all about the mindset aspect of it. And yeah. I know we need to wrap up here and we're going to give you another chance to, um, say how people can find you, but just, I wanted to give you a compliment too. Um, it's because he says y'all and it? it is, that's what it is. Um, well, he actually, he is a Southern gentleman <laughs> and is. That I, that's actually bringing me to my next point is that as a woman, I really appreciated that anytime you're talking about your business, you use the word we. And I can't, I don't even know if I could count how many times you said Carol, Joy, and I, as you're talking about your business. And yeah. the reason that is, <clears throat> is um, I wanted to compliment you on that is so many people, it, it real estate in particular has definitely been a man's world. And, you know, even if you look at the, the mastermind we're a part of, it's probably, I don't know, 98% yeah. men. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I happen to be very involved in our business, but even if I wasn't, even if I was just a supportive role, when you're building a business like real estate, it takes, you know, if you're, if you're in a marriage or in a partnership of some kind, it takes both of you. And so I, I really appreciated that you always included your wife in your, in your comments. Glenn's always really good. About that. She is, uh, she's like the most important part of this business to me, because I mean, one thing I have no interest in doing is being at, working in a business on an island by myself. Yeah. I, and I'll give you an example of that, uh, Amber, and I appreciate you saying it. So when we started in the education coaching business to other real estate investors, that was in March of 2011, two years after we'd started, you know, actually using <laughs> private money ourselves. 
And um, so in 2011, I was booked pretty quickly to present uh, on stage at three other um, events of, you know, promoters having their own events. And I went out on the first two and I was only gone, you know, two or three days. And I came back home to Carol Joy and I said, Carol Joy, here's the deal. If I'm going to keep getting on an airplane and flying somewhere and teaching people how to do what we do, you're going to go with me because let me tell you something, you can be in the midst of 300 people and be very, very lonely. Right. And yep. I have no interest in staying in that hotel room by myself at night. So since that time, Carol Joy has been with me virtually on every trip uh, that we've done to go and, you know, coach uh, other real estate investors. That's fantastic. That's, and, uh, and women are doing, just as a little side note, women are doing like amazing in real estate right now. Uh, we have uh, we have a good chunk of our students that are females, even single yeah. females that are just like killing it. And yeah. it's it's such a good fit for women. So I, I want to just wrap up. We got, we got, I heard again, that when Amber said so many golden nuggets, Jay, today was great. And, um, one comment you said early on that I wrote down, I think everybody should write down if you didn't, is it's impossible for you to fail until you decide to quit. That was a good one because you're right. You're right. You know, we we understand each other, right? We're, we're building businesses. We understand that no matter what, it just quits. This failure is not an option, right? And there's so many people start this and then they realize it's hard. The other thing that I, I wanted to um, summarize what you said was that, you know, become an educator and get good at your craft. Like get good at getting your name out there. I can't tell many people that we... We have money from people I've never met. People have heard us on podcasts, heard us on things over the years. And they've called and said, hey, I got a hundred grand to put to work. And I'm like, uh, and sometimes I've been too bad. I'm like, actually, I don't have any room for it right now, but I'll let you know. And, and sometimes you're amazed that we're at the people you get the money from because you never thought in a million years they'd have money. I have people, I, we have, I have one investor now that uh, um, she's in California. I've never met her. Her son is, I think like five mm -hmm. or six. Jay, his piano skills are off the chart. Like, I mean, like your level. I'm crazy good. Like I, you know, but this, this, it's amazing the people that you meet through this, right? So I think what you said is really great. Just, you know, become an educator, um, you know, make sure that you, I think if you get good at raising money, the rest of the business gets easy. Cause when you have money, you can do whatever you need to do. You know, it, when you have the confidence to say, I'll buy that house. I'll take one of those, two of those, three, I'll take three of those. I'll take four <laughs> of those. Cause you have the money. You don't have to worry about it. So I think when you get good at the craft that you teach, it's been, uh, been awesome. To be fair, we got to wrap up. Tell everybody how they can reach you one more time. Absolutely. So to get a copy of my new book, free, and the name of the book is Where to Get the Money Now, that'll teach you step by step what we've been going over here and fill in a bunch of cracks as well that we didn't have a time for. It teaches you the five steps on raising money from the warm market and five steps on getting money from existing private lenders. And you can get Where to Get the Money Now, my new book for free at www.jayconner.com forward slash book. Awesome. Jay, thanks so much for being here today, buddy. I appreciate it. It's been great, uh, great spending time to get to know you and hear about you and your wife and all that stuff. Yes, and the give, journey. give my fellow Texan a hug. Yeah, that's I will sure do it. She, she should be getting here to the office. Uh, she went to the attorney's office to pick up a great big old check to the tune of $149,000. I'm sure so, she doesn't mind that job. <laughs> so she should, she should be here in about, in fact, we're supposed to meet for lunch in about 10 minutes. Oh, uh, that's great. Well, go enjoy your lunch. Yeah. Th thanks so much for being here, Jay. Thank you so much for having me. Love you guys. You too.